Goldfinger with the caption, Watch Out Host. The league says this violates their social media policies and they consider it unsportsmanlike. Flash floods are plaguing several western cities this weekend with up to four inches of rain expected in some states. Fast moving storms caught some people by surprise Friday. In Las Vegas, low lying areas were turned into lakes and many people had to be rescued from their cars. Near Phoenix, summer storms triggered a river of mud. You can see it right there. In Los Angeles, a powerful thunderstorm dropped an inch of rain in just 10 minutes. It just felt like someone's throwing rocks at your windows. It was just so intense. I had never, ever seen anything like that in my life. There's no relief in sight for the Pacific Northwest. Meteorologists say there's another week of heat ahead. In the Southwest, they're calling for thunderstorms throughout the weekend. Overseas flash floods and wildfires are causing big problems in northern Italy. One woman died after her car was swept away by a flash flood in the mountains. Meantime, wildfires were reported just outside of Rome Friday. Large parts of that country experiencing sweltering temperatures above 100 degrees. Italians have nicknamed that heat wave Lucifer because it's triggered forest fires and severe weather as well as damaging crops. Always watching, always tracking. WUSA 9's first alert weather. DC's most accurate. And none of those problems here. We had a picture perfect day. Yes, yes, we did. And you know, we're going to have another very nice day tomorrow. I love it. And I awesome. urge you to soak it in because by Monday, mm -hmm. we're talking shower storms, maybe yeah. some severe weather around here. Okay. But, you know, the one saving grace to all of this is that I don't have any 90s. Okay. I have very few wow. mid-80s actually on the seven-day forecast. That's interesting. So, and this is August. This is yeah. This not could be this could be the dog here. days. You know, the hundred degree yeah. stuff. But no, we're not going to see that. But we will have a threat for severe okay, weather. Okay. How'd Monday. you do with the three degree today? You I'm know, a little curious today was about such that. a nice day on so many fronts, Deborah, including the three degree guarantee. Oh. Had a forecast high temperature of 83. We didn't make 83. We made 81. You won. It was beautiful. You're doing okay. Yeah, two degrees. I'm going to 84 tomorrow for my three degree guarantee temperature and feeling pretty good about that. In fact, we're gonna have a great start. Sunshine for the first half of the day, gorgeous. Humidity levels will creep up just a little bit, but still be comfortable. As the afternoon wears on, we'll see a few more clouds. Not too breezy, but winds will turn toward the south here a little bit more as we get into the afternoon with those highs low to mid 80s and some of the folks might not get out of the 70s today a lot of areas didn't get out of the 70s and tonight we're down in the lower 60s i'm starting to think winchester's thermometer may be running about three four degrees too cool because they also didn't get as warm today so we'll take this one with a grain of salt but 70 in andrews 71 in easton down to 63 in frederick right now and in the mountains it's in the 50s already it's going to be a good night for many to open the windows and take advantage of the free air conditioning. 73 currently at National with clear skies, light southwesterly winds, and the dew points in the 50s right now. By morning, we'll be down to 65 in town with upper 50s to around 60 in many of the suburbs and mid 50s in the Shenandoah Valley, low 50s, if not some upper 40s out toward Garrett County. Wow, for August, that's sweet. What we're looking at is high pressure nearby. That's why the winds are slackening tonight. That cool northerly flow on the east side of the high. On the west side of the high, we got some clouds. We're already seeing showers across Missouri. That's in front of the storm system that's going to head toward us. So drier air in place now, and it'll be with us tomorrow morning. So a great start to your Sunday with the sunshine. As the day wears on, we're going to see more clouds, especially in the afternoon and especially out to the west. By tomorrow night, the clouds will thicken up. Can't rule out some isolated showers overnight as a warm front approaches. Remember the front that's south of us that went through yesterday? Well, that starts to lift north. The concern, though, on Monday, look at the orange and red here by late morning. These could be strong to possibly severe storms across the region through the afternoon. Looks like the best chance may be south and east. And then this front starts to clear us out Monday night into Tuesday morning. So Tuesday looks better with the front to the south. We'll see some drier air in place and uh, Tuesday and Wednesday look rather pleasant, but the severe threat and this may get adjusted tomorrow, but right now from the Storm Prediction Center there in Norman, Oklahoma. These are the guys who focus on nothing but severe weather. Have the area in southern Maryland down toward Richmond, the eastern shore in the slight risk, which is two out of five on the scale. Damaging winds, hail, and even an isolated tornado or possibilities there on Monday. Our forecast then for tonight, delightful open the windows, 56 to 66. As we look in towards Sunday morning, just gorgeous, 60s and 70s. And then in the afternoon, a few more clouds, but still very nice, 80 to 85. Keep in mind the average high now. 88 Monday yellow weather alert showers and storms with luck. We get past the morning commute, but midday in the afternoon could be rough 82 
Pleasant on Tuesday, also 82 with sunshine returning. Midweek comfortable, a low 80s by Thursday. Hey, preseason football up in Baltimore. The Nats might be dealing with an isolated storm and then more unsettled weather Friday and Saturday. We got Nats on 9 Friday. We can't have showers and storms. We cannot have no. that. Can you do something about it? I wish. All right, you know, I've got just a segue. I've got Facebook Live over here and people are kind of chiming in. Everyone's talking about the beard tonight. Uh -huh. The beard is trending here at WSA 9. But I got some interesting stories let's get for to you. The news. OK, <laughs> let's get to the news. Here we go in Seattle, a pig headed for an auction makes a run for it. Traffic cameras captured the pig as he jumped from a trailer on a busy highway. Several people stopped to help. Some even herded the big guy through the traffic. There he is right there in the bottom right. I mean, Pig had a couple of scrapes, otherwise he was uninjured. Eventually, the pig's owner returned to reclaim the animal. OK, let's pivot to another animal. This time, a boy in Connecticut woke up to find a skunk in his bed. Yeah, not necessarily this guy, but a skunk that would look kind of like that. The little black and white smelly dude apparently got into the house by stowing away in a trash can that was brought inside. Once in, he made his way upstairs and into the bed where a 13-year-old boy was sleeping. Animal control came and they say the whole house stunk of skunk. Trending tonight, a young Virginia boy offers to mow the White House lawn and the president accepts. This all started when the young man from Falls Church sent the president a letter. After receiving it, President Trump invited him to spend some time with a White House groundskeeper. The little boy's name is Frank and his dad says Frank has always enjoyed the office of the president. Some of our friends chiming in tonight on social media about the young lawnmower. Robin says, that's so cute. Melanie says, a kid with ambition, great to see. And Brittany says, I hope the kid charged for his services, yeah. And we always want to hear from you, so send us your comments. They may end up on the air. Okay, so did you ever think about buying an island? I know one for you. It's in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay, north of Smith Island, if you know where that is. It's 55 acres, the whole thing waterfront property, and it costs a million and a half. Oh, one thing, it comes with about 30 goats. They're thrown in for free. That's a bargain. So can you rock it like Carlos Santana? The top air guitarists in the country hope they can. Yeah, they're all here. They're competing tonight in the U.S. Air Guitar National Finals because there's a thing called that at the Black Cat Club in Northwest Washington. <laughs> the competition is considered the Super Bowl of air guitar. It draws top air guitarists from around the country to compete for the title of 2017 U.S. Air Guitar National Champion. The winner heads to Finland to compete for the world title. Can't make this stuff up, guys. Now, Frank Hanrahan has spent the day with the Redskins and some excited fans. Psycho! Oh, that's better. That's good. Sign me up. Just kidding. Can't take the contact. Never liked it. Always shied away. All right, straight ahead. Got the latest from Redskins training camp down here in Richmond. Next in sports.
Now, WUSA 9 Game On Sports with Frank Hanrahan, brought to you by Xfinity. Redskins, they're putting in the work as training camp rolls on. It was Fan Appreciation Day here down in Richmond. But of course, it's great to practice and all, but at some point the Redskins want to start hitting somebody else. And that opportunity comes for them this Thursday, first preseason game that'll be on the road at the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, you get tired of looking at the same faces across the line of scrimmage from you. I mean, I think, uh, I think Morgan Moses and I have seen, seen enough of each other. We're ready to see somebody else. So that's, uh, that's always good, the good part about when the game start up. Kirk Cousins, Redskins quarterback, this week went viral with his bars of Hamilton. I don't even know what bars means, but he was caught on tape singing Hamilton. Can you do me a favor? Yeah. Can you sing a couple bars? Or no, it... I don't sing on command. Uh, See, I, that, I told them not to ask yeah, you that. I, I, That's not I, me asking the question. I, I, I did the mic'd up the other day, and I think I gave plenty that day. <laughs> It was a great day down here in Richmond weather-wise, and that's, I'm sure, one of the reasons there was a lot of fans. It was grueling. It was a killer getting down here. It took Tommy Hunsinger, my producer, six hours to get here. No, I'm kidding. It's about four hours, right? Amazing. But uh, in the end, it was well worth it. Fans out here to see some of their favorite players and their favorite team. Who did you come out here to see? Who's the number one player that you want to see out here on the field? Number 86, Reed. Oh, you know, he's, he's hurt. I know. <laughs> Everybody's worried about his toe, but we, we saw him over there working out. He looks just fine. How are you feeling about this season? Well, every year we, we have hope, every year. And uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I think it's going to be promising. Um, I like what they've done, some of the uh, changes that were made in the offseason. So I'm looking forward to the season. I'd say cautiously optimistic. Mm -hmm. um, reading the different reports, seeing uh, who's, who's progressing so far in, tra in uh, training camp, and. I don't know. I try to stay low key, try not to get your hopes up too high, but I do have a good feeling about it. This is really cool to get up close and personal with the Redskins, huh? It's awesome. It's it's, it's an outstanding day to be out here mm -hmm. to, to support the Washington Redskins. I've been a Redskin fan from day one to now. <laughs> so you're still with us. <laughs> still, still with the Skins. Nationals losing game two of their series at the Cubbies. Final count 7-4. Bryce Harper, though, did homer for the Nats in the losing cause. Rubber match tomorrow afternoon in Wrigley Field. And at Rock Creek and the City Open Tennis Tournament, a little bit of an upset. Jack Sock, one of the top-ranked Americans, though, gets knocked out by uh, Kevin Anderson in the semifinals. Sock complaining afterwards about the conditions of the court. How about worrying about playing the game? Everybody's playing in that condition, Jack Sock. So he says he's never coming back likely to play in D.C. We are at Redskins training camp down in Richmond. Frank Hanrahan, WUSA 9 Sports. I love the cautious optimism. Yes. Good stuff. Hey, we don't even need caution tomorrow. We just can be optimistic, right? About tomorrow, yes. Yes, it's looking good Sunday, but our shower's looming. Yeah, well, that's the problem. Howard's going to have a quick update when we come back.